This is the Genesis G70 shooting brake. It looks really good, it drives really well, and it's practical. And despite its appearances, it's actually not made in Europe. If you're in the market for a new car and you're not sure which one to get, then you've come to the right place. Hello, my name is Alex Dalrymple and this is my channel, Four Wheels in a Seat, where I review new cars every week. Make sure you don't miss one, hit the subscribe button down below and give me a like as well if you enjoy the video. The Genesis G70 shooting brake is one of the best looking wagons on the road and, well, frankly, there's not that many of them left. This competes with the likes of the BMW 3 Series, the Volkswagen Arteon and the Audi A4. And despite looking German, it's actually Korean, with Genesis being part of the Hyundai group. It's their luxury brand. And this car certainly holds its own as far as looks goes. I mean, it's gorgeous. <laughs> The front end of the G70 shooting brake looks exactly the same as the sedan and incidentally I think this is actually the third G70 I've reviewed that has had that number plate. Uh, so I've got the big blingy grille here that uh, also has the radar built into it here for the adaptive cruise control and it's got the same pattern as the grille so it's pretty much undetectable. I like these uh, parallel lights here with the big LEDs inside them and the driving lights that do double duty as turn indicators and of course that big Genesis badge that if you blink and squint your eyes a little bit could be mistaken for an Aston Martin badge. From the side here, you can see that beautiful shooting brake shape that has a bit of Mercedes Benz about it to my eye, especially here in the rear quarter. This car has all the options thrown on it. So we've got big 19 inch black alloys with Brembo brakes that don't come on the standard version. The rear end of the G70 looks really good as well with this functional spoiler up top, the brake light built into it in a thin LED strip, big Genesis badging there, the rear light clusters which look a little bit Mercedes-Benz-esque to me but they do reflect the ones at the front. A signature piece of Genesis functionality is actually putting the boot open button into the rear windscreen wiper here, it's sort of hidden away, you've got to know to look for it to find it. And that reveals a 465 litre storage space which is actually pretty good. Under the floor we've got a space saver spare tyre as well as a first aid kit over on the side there. Maybe just a little small for a family road trip to the beach but pretty good for a weekend away. It's under the bonnet where I find the only real disappointment in this car where every other G70 I've tested has had a 3.3 litre turbo V6. Unfortunately the shooting brake only comes in a 2 litre turbo 4 and while it's good it's just not that good. And there's so much empty space in here for a bigger engine. Power output is 179 kilowatts and there's 353 newton meters of torque. Average fuel economy comes in at nine liters per 100 kilometers. Power is driven to the rear wheels only via an eight speed automatic transmission. The G70 was the first Genesis branded car to arrive in Australia about four or five years ago, not including the original Hyundai Genesis limousine. And all subsequent Genesis's, Genesis's, Genesi, uh, have had their own design language, which this car misses out on. And as such, it does feel just a little bit dated in here. All the functionality is here. It just doesn't look quite as cutting edge. Materials wise though, it is still really, really nice with leather and stitching and soft touch materials and brushed aluminium. It still feels properly premium. The 10 inch center console screen is noticeably smaller than that found in other Genesis cars and the software on it just seems like it's about a generation behind. It misses out on a few little extra features that the other cars get. And like all large screen Hyundai and Kia screens, unfortunately it doesn't get wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. You will still need a USB cable to use those. This whole middle part of the console looks like it's come out of a 1990s Jag or Aston Martin. I actually kind of like it. We've got a row of shortcut buttons here with physical dials for the sound system. The climate controls actually feel a little bit behind the times. The newer Genesis cars do this a lot better and the temperature can only be viewed on the screen. It doesn't show it down here with the actual controls themselves. Wireless phone charging underneath that along with a USB and a 12 volt outlet. My phone does kind of slide around on this pad a little bit so charging is is a bit intermittent. The lower console here with brushed aluminium I think looks really good and I really like this gear shifter. It has such a solid metal feel to it. In fact, everything in this car just feels really, really solid and really, really well made. Two good size cup holders and a smallish center console bin with another USB in there. The head up display on the windshield 
passes the polarised sunglasses test, which is a rare thing, I'm very happy to report. And the digital instrument cluster, I think, has had a bit of an update since I first reviewed a G70 because it now features the 3D feature that I've only seen in the uh, G80 and the GV70. So that is where the dials here, uh, which are completely digital, uh, take on a 3D appearance. And I want to know what it is that Hyundai know about how to make 3D displays that TV manufacturers apparently don't. We can get 3D without glasses in a car, but we can't get it at home on our TVs. What's going on with that? Steering wheel feels really nice, has a sporty feel to it, red stitching and it's leather wrapped. It feels really good. Pretty easy to use controls there too with a big Genesis badge in the middle. The seats are very nice. They're made from genuine leather with red stitched quilting that extends over here onto the doors as well. There is full electric adjustment. They're heated and ventilated. You get bolster support as well as lumbar support. And the seating position in the cabin is nice and low. It feels really sporty. There's good visibility out the front. Not too great through the rear vision mirror just because the uh, rear window there is quite small and uh, good visibility in the wing mirrors too. Headroom uh, is a little bit limited and I did hit my head on the roof the other day when I went over a bump a little bit too fast and uh, that gave me a bit of a shock. But other than that, this is actually a really comfortable place to be. Well, unfortunately, backseat passengers don't fare as well. Just like the BMW 3 Series, there is not a lot of room back here. I'm 190 centimetres tall behind my own seating position and my knees are hard against the seat, which is made all the worse because of this hard shell here that my knees are digging into, so it's really quite uncomfortable. If you're sitting on this side, however, you can actually use these buttons to move the passenger front seat backwards and forwards to give yourself a bit of extra room. But on the plus side, we've got more of this beautiful leather here with red stitch and it's here on the doors too, along with more brushed aluminium. Headroom is actually not as bad as I thought it would be. It's actually pretty doable. And there is one USB outlet here for your children to fight over in the back seat. The outboard seats are also heated. There's controls here for that on the door. And one thing I forgot to mention when I was sitting in the front is the uh, red seat belts. I really like these. And there's an armrest here with cup holders too. <laughs> My foot's stuck. <laughs> Am I going to get out of here? Oh, there we go. So the very first thing I noticed when I picked up this car from Hyundai the other day was the sound of the engine noise and lack thereof. As it was being pulled up at the driveway, I went, oh, hang on, that doesn't sound like the Genesis that I've come to know and love. Uh, that is very much the smaller engine in it. The uh, two-litre four-cylinder turbo just doesn't quite have the same note as the twin-turbo V6. And as soon as I drove the car out of the driveway, I could definitely feel the difference. That's not to say that this car is slow, though. It is certainly not slow. It's just not quite as lively. So when you put your foot down, it does have a bit of go. You do feel it especially when you put the car into Sport Plus mode, which also turns off the traction control and the bolsters here in the driver's seat hug you in more firmly. Safety gear includes blind spot monitors and cameras in the wing mirrors, which are displayed on the driver's instrument cluster whenever you turn the indicator on. There is also adaptive cruise control and the lane keep assist I find myself kind of fighting with. It's quite strong, it really does try to push me into what it thinks is the middle of the lane, which is not always what I think is the middle of the lane. But the driving dynamics are just fantastic. Being rear wheel drive, this car is a lot of fun to throw around into corners and it just hugs the road so beautifully and stays really nice and flat, meaning you can keep your speed up a little bit more. Drive modes, we've got Eco, Comfort, Sport and Sport Plus. And there is a bit of a difference between those modes. Obviously, Sport is the most fun to get around town in. Uh, sport Plus, probably not so much, just simply because it turns the traction control off and that is a, an important safety feature if you're not meaning to have it switched off. And Eco, well, that just kind of makes everything a bit boring now, doesn't it? Sport Plus really does hang on to those gears a bit longer than it perhaps sounds like it needs to. Almost to the point where it's like, you know what, I'm going to start shifting gears manually just to give the engine a break. The amount of acceleration doesn't quite match the engine noise. 
The suspension tune also feels really nice and smooth. It's not too harsh and it's not too soft. It's sort of right in that sweet spot. Driving around, this car does feel quite comparable to a BMW 3 Series, but probably not the 2023 model. I'd say it's probably more on par with last year's one because BMW have really stepped up their game in terms of interior tech with operating system 8. The Genesis feels more like what we saw in the last generation of BMW 3 Series, which is still really good, but I think Genesis can maybe take this car to the next level as they have with their other cars like the G80, the GV70 and now the GV60. But it's certainly on par as far as refinement goes and just the, the solidness, the solidity if that is the correct term to use, uh, the build quality of this car, it is really good. There might be a fraction more road noise though, it is uh, not quite as whisper quiet as a BMW can be. I just wish they put the six cylinder engine in this car. It's just, oh, it would be so good. I think Genesis really need to get themselves into a Hollywood movie franchise because these are great cars that no one seems to know about. I mean, I don't know if we can really picture James Bond driving a Genesis, although it would probably be more exciting than the Ford Mondeo he drove in Casino Royale. Maybe Mission Impossible, perhaps. Starting at just under $70,000 and about 15 grand more for how you see it here, the Genesis G70 shooting brake is honestly just as good as the Euro cars it's trying to emulate. But its small engine and slightly dated interior does hold it back. But on the plus side, that price is extremely competitive. So my advice, take one for a test drive and see if it could be the compact executive wagon you're looking for.